Hello there, my little cosmic cupcakes. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. This one is a big one for me because it's something that my clients mention and ask me about and work with me on all the time. It's something that just comes up again and again. I have made a video on this topic previously. I'll leave that one down below. It was from a Self Love September episode quite a long time ago. And I stand by what I said in that video, but I think there's so much more that can be said on the topic of imposter syndrome. So I'll start by just briefly describing what imposter syndrome is. If you are wondering or if you are trying to figure out whether or not it's something that you deal with, usually when somebody's dealing with imposter syndrome, they will not, under any or many circumstances, accept that they are good at something, that they deserve to be able to do something, that they belong in the world that they're in or that they want to enter. They do not accept compliments. They tend to deflect any compliments they receive. If they have any successes, they largely put them down to external things like, oh, it was just luck or the other people on the team were really great and that's why we won. Or they might say something like, well, I had a really good teacher. You know, it's all, all the praise should be for the teacher. So it's never something that they actually accept fully into themselves. They cannot in any way believe that any of their talent, any of their worthiness is internal. And imposter syndrome might turn up in one specific place. So it might turn up for somebody with their artistic endeavors, with their spiritual practice, with their parenthood or their role inside the family, or when it comes to being a business owner, when it comes to accepting money for the services that they're providing. So in other ways, they might not have imposter syndrome, but there might be one key aspect of life where the imposter syndrome is really, really strong. There is a feeling that people that have imposter syndrome describe, and it's a feeling I've been through myself. And basically it's this feeling that you're going to be caught out. You're going to be exposed as an imposter. Someone is gonna walk up to you, tap you on the shoulder and ask you to leave because you shouldn't be there. Or people are gonna just start to realize that you in some way did not get where you were in a fair way and you need to go or that you are not as good as everybody else and you never will be and so you need to leave, you are not part of this. So imposter syndrome is very much experienced by people who feel like outsiders on some level. They feel like they're part of a club or they are part of a, a passion or a business or a field or an area of study but they shouldn't be there somehow. They got in there by mistake. They didn't get in there on merit. They didn't get in there because they deserve to be in there. It's all a mistake. And at some point, their house of cards is going to come tumbling down and everybody is going to realise that they should not be part of the club and they will be booted out. And you can imagine living like that with that kind of paranoia, that insecurity, that feeling that you are always pretending and that you cannot receive that full feeling of legitimacy. It can get quite miserable it can be quite anxiety inducing. It can lead people to do things like overwork massively and try to constantly be obtaining that next degree of expertise. But all the time it's a mirage, you know, you get there and you think that's when you're going to feel legitimate. But actually when you get there, you know, the, 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 the gleaming oasis is gone. The mirage is somewhere else because it was in your mind all along. So lots of people go into frantic overworking and they try to figure out how it is that they can finally feel that they're worthy of the job they're doing or they're worthy of the world that they're in. They're worthy of the thing they enjoy. They're worthy of the role that they're playing. And it's just never that thing. It's always over the next horizon. Legitimacy and worthiness is always over that next horizon. So it can get quite tiring. The problem with imposter syndrome is that when you have it, you will probably put a lot more of your energy into proving yourself right, proving that you are a fraud, proving that you are an imposter, that you're not worthy of your position, than into proving yourself wrong by actually looking at the evidence that you are a fraud, that you are an imposter, that you don't deserve something, and actually questioning the mindset that you have. So people with imposter syndrome start to try and gather evidence that they are right in what they're thinking about themselves. And that usually leads into massive toxic comparison. They might go round and look at other people's social media or other people's qualifications or whatever, and they'll say, you see, that person is a legitimate mother because they do this, that, and that. That person deserves to be a professional card reader because they're doing this and this and they've been doing it for this long. 
and they will look at themselves in relation to others and what others have and they'll say well there you go that's the undeniable proof that I'm an imposter I shouldn't be here I'm never going to be worthy I'm never going to make the cut weirdly enough it's not just people that are right at the beginning of their journey with something who experience imposter syndrome people at the very very top of their game experience imposter syndrome or at least sort of like periods of it that they kind of have to come out the other side of so even after you've been in your profession for years you've been working on your project for years you've been playing your role for years upon years you still might have that feeling that you're not supposed to be there and that worry that people will find out that you're no good and you're just a you're just a goddamn hack <laughs> and you should take your things and leave so you know really experience accolades praise um time served sometimes doesn't really help with imposter syndrome. It might lessen it, but some people still do deal with it uh, from time to time, and sometimes in a really severe, very savage way. In my line of work, the discussion around imposter syndrome comes up a lot. It comes up in my business mentoring sessions quite frequently, because there I'm talking with clients who either have a business where they do card slinging or mentoring or making witchy goods or providing services, and they may feel that they are struggling with their sense of, of legitimacy and capability. Or I speak to people who really want to start a business, but the feeling of imposter syndrome is holding them back. I also work with people who feel like a fraud as an artist. They feel like an imposter as a witch. They feel fraudulent as a mother. So it kind of goes on in that vein. I've had people say that they have imposter syndrome when it comes to the relationship that they have with their deity because they look at the relationships that others have with their deities and they feel like oh wow you know th their relationships are so significant so legitimate so powerful who am I to say that I work with Hades who am I to say that I walk with Dionysus you know so it goes on and on there are so many ways in which somebody feels like an imposter in their life in this video I really do want to give some impassioned honest advice um, it comes from a personal place from my own experiences of imposter syndrome through having my public platform doing my creative work in the world um, spiritual counseling card slinging and also writing my book I've definitely gone through bouts of massive imposter syndrome and I don't think that's something that's at an end yet I think that that will certainly continue as I go on in my journey I'll go into those like dips those imposter syndrome dips and I'll have to claw myself out of them so I'm advising from a personal place but I'm also talking from the perspective of learning a lot from other people about how their imposter syndrome turns up. Before I talk about the advice that I have though, I do want to say for the record that there is such a thing as being at the beginning of something and actually not yet being legitimate in the direction that you want to go in. So for example, if you want to play in a band, but you don't know the chords yet, <laughs> you want to be a guitarist in a band, but you actually don't know the chords yet, then it's reasonable that you would assess that ability. You would say, I'm right at the beginning and you would decide to start learning the guitar. Once you've learned the chords, once you're proficient at guitar, and you feel like you're ready to actually rehearse to start being in a band, that is where you might find that imposter syndrome is an issue because you've actually reached proficiency at your chosen instrument, but you may still feel like for some reason you're not allowed to play in a band. So that's where imposter syndrome has come in. But actually recognizing that you cannot yet play the instrument, and therefore you are not yet ready to be in a band, that's not imposter syndrome, that's just common sense. <laughs> and the same goes with uh, wanting to be a professional card reader. If you want to be a professional tarot reader, but you want to go ahead and do that in the next three months, and you actually do not know how to read the cards, you would not be able to know the meanings of the cards without referring to a book, you're not confident reading for others, then I would say again, that's not imposter syndrome, that's just realism. <laughs> you know, you need to learn the cards, you need to really give yourself to the study of tarot before you then decide that you're going to go pro and read for people. So there definitely is that to consider. I'm not saying that anybody who recognises they're not legitimate or not ready for a specific field or a specific activity yet has imposter syndrome. But imposter syndrome obviously usually turns up when we are ready, we are more than ready, or we've even been doing it for a while and we've been praised for it, we've earned money for it, people like what we're doing, people have said thank you to us for what we're doing and we still feel like there is a sense that we are not meant to be there, we don't deserve it. And that causes 
causes anxiety, it causes problems with self-esteem, it causes problems with actually enjoying what we're doing and I think it's those people today that I'm really speaking to with this resource. I mean there is absolutely no doubt that there are some things that you need to be trained in, there are some things that you need to be certified in order to do. There is an industry standard form of training or a few different options you can take for training but essentially you need to be trained or you need to have a license to do what you want to do and I'm not by any stretch of the imagination saying that you should just fling that over a rainbow and not bother to get certified if you need to but I will say at the same time that there are some people who are collecting certifications as if they're going out of style and you don't need to do that especially if you look at the history that you have with taking different courses getting certified learning things from different mentors and you think I've done quite a lot of that at this point and I still don't feel like I'm at the point where I'm allowed to say that I am this thing or go ahead and start a business offering this thing or start a social media platform where I showcase this thing that I can do that I've supposedly been trained in. I still don't feel like that's happening. If you feel that way, it does not mean that the certifications that you took were bad, the training that you took was a failure or anything like that. It just means that you were doing it for the wrong reasons. You were doing a George Carlin type of thing. You were taping sandwiches to yourself instead of actually eating them. And sometimes certifications can be like that. You want another one and another one. You rack them up to feel comfy and to feel like you're getting stronger and more towards the finish line. But the finish line just keeps repositioning itself and you keep telling yourself, oh, there's something else that I need to do before I'm good enough. You might want a piece of paper for your own confidence and no one can argue with that. You might want a piece of paper because you know that in your particular industry, your clients um, value that piece of paper. So it's good for business. But whatever you do, just don't fall into the trap of endlessly collecting certifications or doing endless amounts of study, telling yourself that that's how you're going to cross the finish line into your own sense of internal permission, because the likelihood is that that's not how it's going to happen. And you basically end up on this certification hamster wheel, this training hamster wheel. And I guess in a way, the point of me putting this into the video is to ask yourself to check whether or not that's something that you've, you've been doing. Is it something that you used to do? Is it something that you see somebody else doing who is more than ready for what they wanna get into, but they just keep telling themselves they need more training? The second imposter syndrome trap that I want you to be aware of so that you don't fall into it, who are you listening to? Are you actually opening your ears and your mind and your heart to somebody who is discouraging you? Somebody who is demeaning or belittling what it is that you want to do? Someone who's telling you that that ship has sailed and that you can't do what you want to do. There's no point. You should just grow up. You should just get over it. Why are you wasting your time with that? It's not going to make you any money. It's weird. Why are you doing that? You know, those kinds of statements, if they run on in your mind long enough, they're going to have a very detrimental effect. And it's not fair on you. It's not fair on you, it's not right, and it's important for you to be able to feel you can reduce or in fact completely eliminate the sound of those voices coming through to you, giving you those messages over and over again. There might be a possibility as well that you are just listening to an old version of yourself. You're telling yourself an old story. So it might not even be about anybody that you've got around you. It might be a negative story that you're telling yourself about what you can achieve, what you're worthy of, what's possible. And maybe you've come to a point on your journey where you just don't believe those old stories anymore. And if so, then it's time to go in there and actually do some tinkering to turn those stories down or smash that fucking radio altogether, darling, and keep going on the joyful journey that you want to go on. One of the most classic stories people tell themselves about who they are is that they're not the type of person that can do that. They don't have the kind of characteristics that would make them capable of that. That's for other people. That's something other people do. And I would ask you to consider, do you really still believe that story? Is that some crap that you got from your parents or from your unsupportive or abusive ex-partner? Is that some crap that you got from society even? Society telling you that you're not the cut of person that can do this or do that. Do you really believe it? Is it something that you used to tell yourself, but now you've woken up and you've smelled the coffee and you've tasted the hummus and you think, no, actually, I can do that. That is something for me. Because if that's the case, you've got to take a sledgehammer to that old story. It's not fair for you to keep hearing that story, playing yourself that story on repeat. And the other thing I want to say on this second trap of kind of listening to the wrong people, listening to the people who are discouraging you, is are you spending a lot of time focused on the messages of people who intimidate you more than they inspire you? And it might not even be their fault. 
you might be listening, for example, to a business guru who is giving quite good advice um, and is supposed to be motivational and inspiring, but actually they just intimidate you. Maybe they make you feel shadowy. Maybe for one reason or another, you cannot connect to the messages that they're giving because there's something about them as a person that is putting you off or making you feel less than. It's not about blaming them, but try and cut that their messages and their platforms out of your experience if they're not helping. Listen to the people who inspire you. Listen to the people who make you feel like you can do it. Talk to the people who have your back and really take advice from the people who make you feel motivated as opposed to making you feel like you could never get there and you could never do it. A person who pushes your buttons and pokes your shadow can be very useful on your journey, but I think sometimes you need some distance from those kinds of figures before you can eventually come Come back to them and actually appreciate their usefulness because if you're really stuck if you're really telling yourself you can't do something you're never going to be something the last thing you want to do is be filling yourself full of very aspirational content from somebody that you feel intimidated by or you have some kind of like weird feeling towards and so all they're doing is making you feel further stuck inside your inability to move and again it's not their fault but it might be good to just check your resources check who you're listening to check who you're checking in with and whether or not they're actually helping you on the journey or hindering you the third imposter syndrome trap is the who am i trap this one is definitely a trap that comes up a lot with my work with clients in a variety of different ways and I think there's a few different ways that you can answer this. First of all, this is something I say to my clients often when they say, who am I though? Who am I? I say, who's anybody? Who the fuck is anybody to do anything really? <laughs> you know, um, everybody is just an individual. Everybody is flawed. Everybody is nuanced. Everybody is human. And so it's really important to put that question, like flip that question back around on itself and say, who the hell is anyone to do anything at any time? Is that how you'd speak to someone else who's trying to do something? No, then why level that at yourself? Why ask yourself that question? Whenever people ask themselves, who am I? Who am I? Who am I to start right at the beginning when this person's already so much further? Who am I to say something when this person's already saying it better? All of the times that people are asking themselves that, they are forgetting in that moment that everybody started somewhere. Everybody at some point didn't know what the degree of their talent could be once it manifested. Everybody at some point didn't really have a strong philosophy, a strong brand, a strong direction. So everybody begins with something and then it snowballs into something else. Everybody starts with that flickering ember of power and then it becomes a burning fire. And that can be you as well, why not? Don't tell yourself that somebody just wrote a novel in all of its perfection and there wasn't a shitty first draft. That's something else that I talk about when my clients engage with me about imposter syndrome is the shitty first draft, the reality of the fact that a novel doesn't just spring out fully formed and beautiful and just as it was first written. There is a shitty first draft that's full of cliches, non-starters, plot holes, and writers go through and they tighten that shit up. So when you're comparing yourself to somebody else who has this finished work of art, this, you know, fully functioning full-time business or whatever it might be, you have to think to yourself, okay, but there was a lot that went into that. There was a lot behind that. And I have to go through those same steps too before I can make it to that, that level. One thing I've noticed about people with imposter syndrome is that they are very often outsiders. And that's a big part of the reason that they feel like imposters. It's because they are coming into something in a bit of a different way to how they see the majority of people doing it. So for example, if somebody wants to be a model or they want to be, they want to start a style channel or something like that, but they are have a bit of a different body shape to the majority of people that they follow in that world. They're an outsider then for that reason. They feel like an outsider. They feel like they're not represented or they're extremely underrepresented. And so they don't feel fully welcomed into that world. If somebody has a very different kind of pioneering take on things, uh, a way of viewing things that they don't really see anybody else in their field or industry talking about, they might feel like an outsider. They might feel like, oh, wow, no one's really here representing me. So I don't really know where I would fit in or if it would be OK for me to start talking in this way. It can definitely be hard to be a pioneer in any industry, in any field, with any passion, for sure, it's not always an easy thing. But what I would ask you to consider is, do you want that entire field to be populated by one type of person? Do you want that entire passion, that area of interest that you have to be dominated by just one type of person? I think it's fair to say that we're doing a massive disservice to ourselves and to the things we love in life 
if we tell ourselves that we are not invited to the party, we can't come and do this thing that we want to do because we are not the cookie cutter definition of what somebody in that world is or what somebody who has that passion is. If you are different, if you are coming from a different perspective, if you don't see people like you being that widely represented in the world that you want to go into, then maybe it's really doubly important that you are the person to bring in that diversity, to bring in that um, widening of the idea of who can be a part of this and who gets to succeed. I think that when a pioneering spirit comes in and broadens our sense of what is available to us within a certain area, you know, and who is speaking to us and sort of broadens our sense of who those people would be, that is very, very sacred work. And if you are a part of that sacred work, then I can only commend you and salute you for that. I think whenever we say to ourselves, who am I to be a part of this? I'm different from the norm. I'm not like those people. I don't have the same qualifications or experiences as those people. I'm coming at it from this angle. Nobody in this world looks like me. If you're thinking any of those things, then the likelihood is that you are a pioneer, someone that's gonna come in and actually enrich the field and leave it a much richer and more dynamic place than how it was when you arrived. I know that I do not want to see anything I'm interested in, any particular field that I'm interested in, being dominated by only one type of person. And we're only hearing the same types of voices all the time. And we're saying that we should only stringently allow these people to be at the helm of the community. I don't like that. I don't like that. It can, it can risk being classist, racist, ableist, and all of those things. So I don't like that for those reasons. And I also just think variety is good for the brain. The stimulation for the soul comes from listening to a variety of different people. Our empathy grows in that way. Our inspiration is sparked in that way. If you are about to be a part of that, then please don't let imposter syndrome hold you back just because you might be the only one of your type or there might be a very small pool of people of your type. Smash it, make it what you need it to be. Come at it from your angle, give that fresh perspective. The fourth tip that I have for people that have imposter syndrome is recognize that you are a far cry from being alone and try to talk to other people about the experiences that you go through with imposter syndrome because you will receive empathy. There are lots of people, I'm not saying everyone, but there are lots of people who experience imposter syndrome. And so not only will you realize that there are so many people out there who didn't let imposter syndrome stop them, but you may also get some really awesome insights and tips and resources, things that various people have found to help them through the imposter syndrome that they deal with. And sometimes it will be the people you don't really expect as well. There have been a few times where someone's told me that they feel like an imposter and they have imposter syndrome and I'm like, whoa, okay, I did not expect that. Nowadays, I expect it far more and I'm not surprised by it at all because it's something that comes up regularly with my clients. It's something that I tackle a lot in my work. And so I'm much more used to seeing it play out and it doesn't surprise me if people do experience it, even at the very tip top of their game, even when I see them as being really uber confident people, it doesn't surprise me. But it used to. Years ago, I'd be like, you feel like you're not legitimate? You feel like you shouldn't be doing this? What? What? And it would really shock me and stun me. But it would also make me realise, oh, you know what? That doesn't mean that this has to make me stand on the sidelines and sit on the suspension, not go forward and not make movements. Because you know what? This person has made movements. This person I consider to be successful in this way, successful in that way. And so if that person feels those things and still goes out and does that amazing job as a witch, as a parent, as a business owner, as a musician, whatever it might be, then I know I can do the same with the things I want to get to in life. When you're in a conversation with somebody and they tell you that they feel like an imposter, they feel like a fraud, they feel like they don't belong somewhere that they really want to be, try advising them. Try seeing if you've actually got anything in your toolkit that you already use to try and help you to get over your imposter syndrome and keep going in spite of it. I think a lot of us would be highly surprised to find that we already have certain things that we use. We already have certain resources that get us through these difficult times and help us to keep moving. And you might even start listening to your own advice. Even if you don't think you've got anything in your own toolkit, the way that you talk to someone else who's got imposter syndrome might be vastly different different to the way you talk to yourself when you have imposter syndrome. So listen to your own voice, see if you can put it back onto yourself, use it as a mirror, look into that mirror and take that advice and wisdom and loving insight back into yourself, back into your own soul. That can always be a really, really important thing to do. The fifth piece of advice I want to give to people that are struggling with imposter syndrome is what do you think it takes for you to not be an imposter anymore? 
What's the story that you're telling yourself about what it means to have graduated past imposter syndrome and actually be legit? Because if you're telling yourself that you need to be perfect, if you're telling yourself that it means that you never make a mistake, if you're telling yourself that you need to know everything that there is possible to know about a subject, then you're going to be sorely disappointed. Nobody is that person. Nobody. There are very, 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 very learned professors in the world who have dedicated their entire lives to the subject they teach and they get it wrong. They make mistakes. They literally have to go in and correct things that they wrote wrong in white papers or whatever. They make mistakes, okay? People change their minds. People gather more information and then recognise that they were wrong the first time around when they produced something or said something or wrote something. Even people at the very top of their game, the elite of the elite in any chosen field, make mistakes, they're human, and sometimes they have to defer to somebody else who has more knowledge than them in a certain field. And that is not a mistake, that's not a fuck up, that is just literally somebody saying, this is where my domain is in terms of what I know or what I'm capable of, what I can do, and this is where you might find that the advice from somebody else is more pertinent because they know more in that area. So if you're telling yourself, once I'm so perfect, once I've got every certification there is, once I never make a mistake, once I'm never wrong about anything, then I won't feel this imposter syndrome anymore. Please know that nobody is that person. <laughs> Please know that nobody is that person. And I don't think that's what you really want to be striving for in the end. The mistakes are a part of it. They are part of the learning process. They are interesting. We can be curious about the mistakes that we make as opposed to being really obscenely judgmental about the mistakes that we make. So please don't tell yourself that there has to be that point over the rainbow where you are absolutely untouchable. You're never going to receive criticism on anything. You're always going to be right about everything because nobody actually wants that person in the room. That sounds arrogant and it sounds like it's bordering on narcissism. We don't want that. We want people who say, I've gathered a certain amount of knowledge or experience or passion or know-how or whatever it is to be able to say that I can confidently do this. I can comfortably showcase this. I can comfortably give myself this label. But there's always going to be things that I could improve on. I'm always learning. I'm always trying to up my game when it comes to the knowledge that I've acquired. That's so much more a nice energy than somebody that's like, oh my God, I need to make sure I'm never wrong. I need to prove to everybody that I'm right. I need to be the best person in every room so I don't feel like an imposter. Actually, that's going to really mess with your personality, with the way that you interact with people and with what they actually think of you as a human being. So please don't do that to yourself. Don't make yourself feel that way. Honey bunnies, these have been some of my key tips for people dealing with imposter syndrome. Please leave down below any of the experiences that you've had with imposter syndrome. Are you dealing with it at the moment and in what area of your life are you seeing it come through? Have you dealt with it and done away with it and you feel like you have some really good tips to suggest to people in the comments to help them to do the same? Please do follow me on social media and I will catch you over on Patreon if you're a Patreon member and if you're not a Patreon member, but yet and you want to join the Patreon family, I'm going to leave those details down below. Speaking of Patreon as well, Baby Cakes, there is going to be an Afterthoughts episode for patrons only. Afterthoughts is an exclusive series over on Patreon for my doll faces and pop tarts. And it's basically where anytime I have a lot more thoughts on a subject that I share in a video, I like to go over there and actually do an additional follow up video where I do a deeper dive into the energies and themes that have come through. So if you want to know three more of my key tips and thoughts about imposter syndrome and get a little deeper into the conversation over there again you can find all of the details for the patreon options down below and much love until next time darlings blessed be